This is underwater photography, but not as we know it. You might find it interesting, it's great fun to do, and it's very, very simple. As always, we start off with a blank piece of paper, that is, no lights, no props, nothing. The first thing we do is to add a product shooting table. Now I'm using a product shooting table just because I happen to have one. It's also quite handy because I can light it from underneath if I want to. I can light it from the back. Don't worry if you haven't got one. Any kind of table will do as long as it will take the weight. The one thing you can't do without for this shot is a fish tank. The fish tank doesn't need to be as big as this one. This just happens to be what I have. The important thing about the fish tank is that it must have flat glass, not curved, and it must be absolutely spotless inside and out. Next job is filling it up with water. That's the easy bit. The hard bit, of course, is getting the water out again. Once the water's in, you need to let it settle for a while. Once the water's settled down, you'll find loads of tiny little air bubbles. They get trapped against the sides of the glass. I think we're all familiar as photographers with the principle of internal reflection, or sometimes in extreme cases, total internal reflection. That's where, if we have the camera at a very, very sharp angle to reflective surface, in this case water, but it could be a sheet of acrylic used for portrait or for still life shot or whatever. If it's a, a very, very sharp angle, we get an almost perfect reflection of the subject. Change the angle, make the angle more obtruse, and it becomes a less clear or less clearly defined reflection. The reflection is actually caused by the transition from the shiny surface to the air, in this case, the transition from the water to the air. And we can make use of this in this type of shot, which is what we're going to do. This is a pretty typical subject for this type of treatment. Anything that uh, people splash onto themselves, deodorant, anything that has a cool sort of image, particularly if it has a cold colour such as green or blue, generally works well. So here we are, free advert for Brute. The only problem we have with it is the label on the back. So we'll get rid of that because otherwise it will show through. So that comes off and of course we then clean it up to get rid of all traces of adhesive that are left. Right, that's looking a little bit better now. We don't want labels showing through on this kind of shot. We're going to put it in the tank upside down. So we suspend it in place and we just use a little bit of wire like that. And we stick it in position right at the end a little bit of gaffer tape, press it down nicely so that it's not going to go anywhere and that will do the job. The wire doesn't have to be this strong, it just happens to be what I've got available and we then want to arrange it in the tank. Next thing of course is to arrange the camera. The camera goes really low down pointing upwards because it's got to point at the line where the water becomes the air, in other words the top of the water. We've got to include that in the shot. Of course we haven't got round to setting the lighting yet. The lighting is probably the most important bit, but of course it has to be arranged right at the end because where the lights go depends on other things such as camera angle. It's only a small subject, but we're going to need quite a lot of power. Partly because we're using honeycombs over the lights. This is a 10 degree honeycomb because we want to control the direction of the light and we want to use very, very hard lighting. In advertising photography, this type of still life subject, we always use the hardest lighting we can get away with. And honeycombs do soak up the light. In addition to that, there's another problem which is not perhaps immediately obvious, but when the light is striking the water surface at an angle, not all of it will enter the water. Quite a lot of it will bounce off at an angle and if you want to Google Cos Law or Cosine Law it will give you the mathematics and you can work it out for yourself. 
you do need quite a lot of light so this is not a situation where I personally would use hot shoe flashes where it's difficult to control the light anyway or very low powered flashes. The other thing we have to think about here is that we need quite a lot of depth of field to get the image sharp at this close distance. This is our frontal light, it's off to the left a little bit, it's a 70 centimetre beauty dish. I may or may not need a honeycomb with it, I don't know at the moment. At the moment I'm using it as it is and this is going to provide the frontal lighting at a fairly low level, it's almost going to be a fill light. We'll worry about the lighting ratio and adjusting it to get it right later on.